Last week we talked about test characteristics, like sensitivity and specificity. But while those things have meaning, it's not always clear how they translate into actual practice. To understand that, we have to talk about likelihood ratios and Bayes' theorem. Stick with me. You're going to be glad you did. This is Healthcare Triage. The problem with tests is that we think they're definitive. They're not. We think that positive means you have a problem and that negative means you're safe. I showed you last week that lots of times you have false negatives and false positives. So it's a mistake to take a test and use that and only that to reach a conclusion. This kind of thinking completely ignores what we think about a patient when she walks through the door. You may remember fakeitis from last week. Maybe when we see our patient, we're really sure she has fakeitis. Then a negative result should leave us concerned that it's a false negative. Maybe we thought there was almost no chance she had the disease. In that case, a positive test might be more likely to be a false positive. Or maybe we weren't sure. Then either result might be important. Bayes' theorem, attributed to, get this, Thomas Bayes, takes this idea and turns it into a formula. Mathematically, it says that the probability of A, given that B is true, is equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. Hold on, hold on, stay with me. In this case, A is having fakeitis and B is a positive test result. So Bayes' theorem says that the probability of having fakeitis given a positive test result is equal to the probability of having a positive test result if you have fakeitis times the probability of having fakeitis divided by the probability of having a positive test result. And I know that that's still complicated, but you don't really need to do the math here. You just need to understand the principle. You look at a patient. You determine based on her story and physical exam what the chance is she has fakeitis. You get a test, and then you do a calculation where you have a new chance that she has fakeitis. And it involves sensitivity and specificity. You use them to calculate a likelihood ratio. A likelihood ratio is the probability that a test is correct divided by the probability that it's incorrect. They come in two flavors, positive and negative, to assess the value of a positive and negative test result. Positive likelihood ratio is equal to sensitivity over one minus specificity. A negative likelihood ratio is one minus sensitivity over specificity. Bayes' theorem works out that post-test odds equals pre-test odds times likelihood ratio. Now I grant you that odds are not the same as probabilities. Odds are the probability of something being true over the probability of something being false. I know you're likely overwhelmed, so let's work through a real world example. Last week, we found that mammograms had a sensitivity of 83.8% and a specificity of 90.6%. So first, we can calculate our likelihood ratios. Positive likelihood ratio equals sensitivity over one minus specificity. This means it's 0.838 over one minus 0.906, or 8.9. A negative likelihood ratio is one minus sensitivity over specificity, or one minus 0.838 over 0.906, or 0.18. Now let's assume a woman comes into the office. She's really worried about breast cancer. We know, based on research and that paper, that about half a percent of women in this population had breast cancer. So the pretest probability, based just on prevalence, is one half of one percent. That means there's a 99 and a half percent chance that she doesn't have breast cancer. So her pretest odds look like this. Odds are the probability something is true over the probability something is false. In this case, 0.005 over 0.995 or 0.005. And here we see one of the neat tricks about pretest odds that makes life easier. For most relatively rare things, pretest odds pretty much equal pretest probability. Even for things like a pretest probability of 10%, the pretest odds are 11%. So a lot of the time, you can just estimate pretest odds to be the pretest probability. So let's say the mammogram is positive. According to Bayes' theorem, post test odds equals pretest odds times likelihood ratio. In this case, post-test odds equals 0.005 times 8.9. The post-test odds, therefore, are 0.045 or 4.5%. You can convert this back to a probability by the equation probability equals odds over 1 plus odds. Probability in this case equals 0.045 over 1 plus 0.045 or 4.3%. Let that sink in for a second. The average woman who has a positive mammogram has a 4% chance of having breast cancer. There's a 96% chance that she doesn't have breast cancer. 
and yet every woman I know who has a concerning mammogram immediately freaks out. That's because most people think that a positive mammogram means you have cancer. It doesn't. It means you have a 4% chance of having cancer. I bet most of you thought you had more than a 4% chance of having cancer before the mammogram was even done. Now this change is based on clinical suspicion. If you had a lump or a really concerning history, such that your doctor thought you had a pretest probability of 30% instead of the background half of 1%, then your equations change. Your pretest odds would still be probability of something being true over probability of something being false. In this case, 0.3 over 0.7 or 0.43. A positive mammogram would mean this. The post-test odds are still the pretest odds times likelihood ratio, or 0.43 times 8.9 or 3.8 and we still convert back to probability the same way. Probability equals odds over one plus odds, or 3.8 over one plus 3.8, or a final probability of 79%. This woman with a positive mammogram would have almost an 80% chance of having breast cancer. This is why mammograms can be a really powerful tool for women who are at high risk, but of debatable value in women who aren't. As a thought experiment, I want you to see what a negative mammogram would have meant for this woman. Let's start at the beginning again, remembering her pretest probability is 30%. We remember that her pretest odds were 0.43, and we use Bayes' equation again, but with a negative likelihood ratio, since the test is negative. Post-test odds equals pretest odds times likelihood ratio, or in this case, 0.43 times 0.18, for a final post-test odds of 0.077. Going back to a probability, it's odds over one plus odds, or 0.077 over one plus 0.077 for a final probability of 7.1%. So after a negative mammogram, this woman still has a 7% chance of having breast cancer. Let that settle in. This woman probably feels reassured with her negative mammogram, but her chance of having breast cancer after the negative test at more than 7% is about twice as high as the first woman with the positive mammogram at about 4%. But that woman's probably freaking out, and she's at like half the risk. This is because people don't think about tests appropriately. Unfortunately, too few doctors do as well. That's because this isn't the way we're trained to think. We think that positive means you've got disease and negative means you're safe. It's just too bad. Now, some of you may complain that although this makes a lot of sense, it's just too hard to calculate. So I'll show you a shortcut. This is a Fagan's nomogram. You start by finding your pretest probability on the left. Then you draw a straight line through the likelihood ratio and wind up at the post-test probability. Once you know the likelihood ratio of a test, it's easy to use. So for the mammogram, the positive likelihood ratio was 8.9. So let's try it for a few numbers. First is the one we did at 0.5%. Drawing the line from there through 8.9 gets us to the about 4% we calculated. You can do this for any pretest probability. You can also do it for a negative mammogram with a likelihood ratio of 0.2. And there are studies which list the likelihood ratios of many, many tests. The Center for Evidence-Based Medicine in Toronto has tables of them at their website, linked down below. Go knock yourself out. See what a positive and negative test really means. And stop assuming that a positive test means disease and a negative test means you're clear. That's not how it works. The vast majority of us are doing it wrong.